Now, the ocean has long tolerated the impact of human-made global warming as excessive heat and energy has warmed the oceans. Now, the change in ocean temperature leads to some unparalleled chain of events, including the melting of the ice, the sea levels rising, marine heat waves and also ocean acidification. This is said to be one of the major threats that climate change poses to marine life in nearly about 70% of the biodiverse areas of Earth's oceans. The rising temperatures also increases the risk of irreversible loss of marine and coastal ecosystems. And widespread changes have been observed, including damage to coral reefs and mangroves that support the ocean life, and migration of species to higher altitudes and latitudes where water could be much cooler. The latest estimates from the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization has warned that more than half of the world's marine species may in fact stand on the brink of extinction in the next 80 to 90 years. A recent research has also shown the locations with exceptionally high marine biodiversity are the most exposed to the future ocean warming, making them particularly vulnerable to the 21st century climate change. Now, some of the most vulnerable areas contain a majority of the world's reef building corals. The various parts of Europe and North America are also experiencing a deadly heat wave and floods. But can ocean warming be one of the reasons behind these weather activities? Let's actually take a look. Now, the Arctic is said to be warming three to four times faster than the globe as a whole, meaning that there is less difference between the northern temperatures and those that are closer to the equator. And according to scientists, this is bringing changes in the North Atlantic jet stream, which in turn leads to extreme weather events like heat waves and flooding. The warmer oceans also contribute to heat domes, which trap heat over large geographical areas. And scientists have found that the main cause of heat domes is a strong change in ocean temperatures from the west to east in the tropical Pacific Ocean. In order to control the rise of temperatures in oceans, researchers have suggested that strengthening of ecological and evolutionary resilience to combat climate change should be made a priority. Now, this could, of course, include improving fisheries, management, assisting the movement of species and also the expansion of well-managed climate smart marine protected areas. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of how all of this, of course, is likely to impact planet Earth and is there a way that humans can actually now try and arrest the rising temperatures? We're being joined by Mr. Swin Doll, who is a former United Nations director and he's joining us on this broadcast. Mr. So thank you very much indeed for making time out and, and speaking to us on this very crucial and important topic. You know, the question that, I'm, that, that a lot of people would want to know is that everyone knows for a fact that the earth is heating up, that the ocean raw waters will rise as the ice caps at the poles will melt. But how is this likely to affect marine life? Because this, this is now said to be one of the crucial issues that a lot of scientists are, of course, debating on. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe the, the most um, dangerous in, uh, effect from um, CO2 that we pour into the atmosphere is the, the, the life in, in the marine areas. Um, so far, um, the oceans have absorbed approximately 30 percent of all the co2 that we have poured into the atmosphere since the industrial revolution mm -hmm. and that means that the ocean is being more acid and when the ocean is being more acid for instance marine life that um, is dependent of produced shells and skeletons they uh, in a way are under severe stress so that uh, uh, in the future, uh, these might more or less right. disappear. And, and, and another impact is uh, uh, which comes not from the acid, acidification, but it's some kind of a combination with warming, is that uh, if the global temperature in, uh, increases by two centigrades, Mm -hmm. uh, research suggests that we will lose 99% of the coral reefs in the in the warm areas. So this is extremely uh, uh, dangerous, actually, and alarming. And uh, we have to do something very fast to avoid such a collapse catastrophe 
in the marine life uh, in the oceans. Absolutely indeed. Now, this, this is an important issue that you spoke to us about, is to have oceans also act as a sink for the carbon dioxide that is getting released, which has resulted in the acidification of oceans. Now, a lot of people may not be aware of this, but phytoplanktons in the oceans also are responsible for nearly about half the oxygen that we have in our atmosphere. Now, what will be the impact of this increased acidification of oceans on the phytoplanktons, which are such an important source of oxygen on planet Earth? It, it is another extremely uh, worrying development. Uh, you, you know that we have actually um, lost or, or, or um, uh, approximately 40% of phytoplankton globally since 1950. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it continues to disappear. And this is the bottom of the food chain. So if we destroy the bottom of the food chain, that will have an impact on all life in oceans, but also on us people that lives from harvesting from the oceans. And, and this uh, the harvesting will, of course, uh, also be on the brink of collapse when the uh, phytoplankton, which is the backbone of the uh, food chain, is under threat and actually Right. already have disappeared with approximately 50 percent so so again all these impacts and effects from so fast changes that we see now with the global warming mm -hmm. is threatening earth it's threatening oceans and so forth another example is that the ocean has actually absorbed 90 percent of right. the heat uh, from from global warming so the ocean has been maybe approximately one centigrade warmer since the start of the industrial revolution and this is energy and mm -hmm. it is this energy that again is driving for instance uh, uh, the hurricanes which is getting stronger because the fuel to the hurricanes is the temperature and the energy that is uh, stored in the water and it has also another impact or similar impact on on the on the ocean currents some research say that it's actually now increasing in strength by 15 percent per decade so this rapid uh, and fast warming is ha have a have a, a very very dangerous impact not only on on the land but i i would say maybe even more in the sea, which we are not talking so much about. So if we are not stopping this very, very fast, mm -hmm. we will see collapses of, of ecosystems in the oceans that we have never seen before. And it will have a severe impact from the bottom of the food chain where you have the uh, phytoplankton right. and upward to, to us as people. You know, this, this I think is a connection that not a lot of people establish very quickly is to have climate change has also resulted in so much of these hurricanes and extreme weather events that we are witnessing. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Tweedol, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Thank you for inviting me. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.